Hi, this video is about change within organisations. So within an organisation, there is a need for change because of a variety of factors influencing society now and businesses worldwide. Uh, in class, footnote one, we looked at the Hal Riggle and Slocum model and it pointed out factors such as globalisation being a factor for the much needed change that we see now um, and that's because business has become a lot more globalised. We've got com competition is now fierce because we have all the borders open so people can be trading from anywhere in the world. We also have the e-commerce which means that people can be buying online and, and accessing products so much faster and with so much more knowledge and information now. Footnote two. So I'm going to be referring to exhibit 15.1, Forces Driving the Need for Change Leadership, um, just going over a few factors of why change is necessary in an organisation and why a leader needs to be a person who can bring about change for a company now. So I talked before about the Hellriga and Slocum model that we looked at in class. But within this model, it says um, within the forces driving the need for change leadership, it talks about globalisation, technology. Technology is now changing so fast that, that if you don't keep up, you just get completely left behind. And that can be technology in the sense of you, we can buy so much easier now, we can go online, but also technology as in design and innovation, creativity and innovation, which they say is creativity and innovation is the most important factor of change for businesses now, footnote two. So we also see economic turbulence happening all around us. The economy isn't stable a lot. It's, it's constantly up and down. So this, again, is another reason why leaders have to be prepared to change and change quickly when necessary. Um, increasing regulations, and I look at that as like health and safety standards now. If you're not going to change your organisation to meet those kind of regulations, then you could end up in serious trouble. Um, and be prosecuted for not having your business up to date with the regulations that are now out there. And that can cover a wide range of different businesses, but also you see like food safety regulations, um, import and exporting regulations, you know, all of these things require a business to adapt and change so that they can be keeping up with what is required now for to be operating as a business. Uh, also market forces like trends, I think of trends, I think, um, you know, like if all of a sudden fashion changes or trends for furniture changes, like we, companies now have to be adaptable, innovative, creative to be able to cater to what consumers demand now. They're so, they've got so much at their fingertips, they've got so much information, so much resources that if a company isn't prepared to to be recognising the changes that are occurring, they're just going to be completely left behind. So yeah, so that's that's a couple of reasons why change is so necessary for an organisation. And um, in class we looked at the Lewin model, which um, talks about unfreezing, and then what unfreezing what is happening with it in an organisation to bring about the change. So you said unfreeze it. Okay, how, and then changing it, and that's the process of things moving and being set into place, and then refreezing it so that that change has cemented and is concrete and will, will last. But within the environment that we're currently living in, that process could be happening every month, every year. It has to be something that we're constantly doing we're constantly unfreezing changing refreezing unfreezing you know it's a it's a very 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 volatile environment now that we live in when it comes to being in business and especially in in many industries that are that are way over like 
oversaturated markets, which just have so many different competitors competing for that same segment, that it is it is so so important that that businesses keep up with change. Um, an example of this would be of someone not doing this would be um, um, Pumpkin Patch that has just recently gone into liquidation um, because they just didn't they didn't change enough or they didn't market what they had in a particular way. Like I, I think I, I really like this stuff and I would have been willing to pay for it because I know it lasts and I know it's quality. However, their, their marketing was never strong enough to remind you that they were there to kind of give more of a loyalty incentive to shop there over someone else or, you know, really trying to be strategic about where they align their business. So that's, that's just an example of someone who hasn't kept up with the times and hasn't adapted their business to, to the environment and has now gone into liquidation and will be probably, unless someone bails them out, shutting down. So then we talk about, okay, leader is, is a change agent. But first of all, I just want to talk about um, resistance to change and and in class we looked at different factors of why people resist change and the underlying element for that footnote one is is fear fear of fear of the unknown fear of failing fear of it not being how they like them not liking it anymore the fear of just fear is often associated with change in a massive way um, also, there's other factors that bring about resistance to change, and I'm going to go into talking about the eight-step model shortly, um, eight-stage model, footnote two, um, which we also looked at in class, and then talk a bit about um, the article that was that we looked at in class as well, and in regards to that model. Um, yes, yeah, so so a leader a leader is a change agent and 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 we um, a part of understanding for this topic is that for a leader to be successful to bring about change there's certain characteristics and there's certain ways that a leader can operate that will bring that will bring about success to an organisation that is trying to transition into change, whereas there's ways that don't work. And so a few of the things that a leader as a change agent has is that, footnote two, so they define themselves as change leaders rather than people who maintain the normal status quo. Um, so, yeah, so that... They see themselves as someone who's going to bring about change. They have confidence in themselves that they can bring about the change. Um, they demonstrate courage. A person that's going to bring change needs to be courageous because you're battling mainly with resistance that will be that will be like influenced by fear. It's very important that a leader that's going to bring change is has has courage to be able to put that fear aside and be able to keep going. Um, they believe that the employees um, employees' capacity to assume responsibility, so they had faith in the people that they're trying to change or the organisation that they're trying to change. Um, they are able to assimilate and articulate values that promote adaptability. So that's, again, just saying they can communicate in such a way that will help people to adapt to the ways that they're wanting to bring in. They recognise and learn from their own mistakes, so that's often a that would often be described as hum humility, which we see as a very important trait in leadership to have. The great majority of great leaders are humble. Um, they are capable of managing complexity, uncertainty, and, and ambiguity, ambigu ambiguity. So again, that would be, you know, they they're not phased, they're optimistic. They persevere, they see a problem 
and they see it more as a challenge than they do an excuse to quit. Um, they have a vision and can describe their vision for the future in vivid terms, and we're going to look at that a little bit more in the next, in the model, in the eight-step model. So, so it's a great thing to be a leader that can bring about change, and we looked at in class at this model, and I also read the article that was online from the Harvard Business, Business Review, um, which also went into depth about this model. So number one was light a fire for change, and that is actually there needs to be a situation that is that is critical or brings about a sense of urgency in people to actually make them aware that this change absolutely has to happen. And that could be um, a few examples that I read about um, in the case study, footnote three, um, that was posted online. It said like some people will um, even mess with financial reports to show a really big loss to be able to present to a company and to present to the whole company to be able to create a sense of urgency um, for change. Um, another option or example was um, was a CEO putting out a mass customer survey knowing that the results were going to come back really negative and to be able to bring this and then report back to the organisation, well, this is why we need to bring about change because of this. This is a crisis. This is a so people need to to be able to push people out of like the normal and out of resisting change and and, and out of like un being unmotivated. They need to really sense why this change has to happen. They really need to see that this is really urgent. Um, and the next one was get the right people on board, and that's. Like, even if you don't have 100% buy-in, it's important that you can bring, like, a team of people around you that are supporting your vision and supporting where you're going. And they, if, if I look at it from that model that talks about, like, early adapters and then, and then you know, you've got innovative ones and then early adapters and then the ones that adapt later, like, I, um, then I think that footnote four, then I think that, you know, the people that you get on board to start with may be the innovators and the early adapters, but slowly other people will come on board as they, as you kind of prove what you're doing is actually working. Some people stand back and wait and watch and then, and then jump on board. Um, three was paint a compelling picture, and that was, again, talking about talking about being able to put a clear vision and a clear strategy out ahead of you and ahead of everybody. And again, that comes back to a leader that can bring about change, can have a vision and describe their vision for the future in vivid terms. So giving someone a 15-page notebook with all the things that are going to happen in the change is probably not going to bring about the effect that you're trying to get. One majority of people won't read it in depth properly. And even if they do, they're still going to be probably have so many other questions. Whereas they say if you can describe in like five minutes or even one sentence the change that you're trying to bring about, um, footnote three, then you will be able to bring a whole lot more people on board if it's simple, easy to understand, and very, very clear and vivid. And that's often seen as a as a trait within transformational leaders. Footnote two. So the next one was communicate the change widely, and that's again, you can tell someone something once, you can have a meeting and bring everyone in on board, but if you're not communicating clearly all the time and making it that everywhere they go it's like all around them so they, they can see it they can hear it the change that's happening is just being fed into them all the time it's um it, that's another thing that has to happen to bring about effective change it can't just be that you have one time where you say something 
this is what I want to happen, this is what I want to happen. I think about my kids and when I'm trying to implement a change in behaviour or a change in, you know, just a routine that we're, that we're doing, it's like I can tell them once and I'd like that to be enough, but it often isn't. Often I have to keep reiterating, keep going over what it is that I want to see happen. Um, remove obstacles, number five, remove obstacles and empower people to act. And that was taking away things that could be stopping the change from occurring. And in my mind, the biggest factor for that would be people who aren't willing to come on board or who are opposing and, and quite verbally opposing what the change that you're trying to bring about, even after you've done all of the other things and brought majority of other people on, um, often if you still have that person, it's like it can be like poison that just keeps spreading. And I relate that back to my life and um, when we first took on our business, we bought it from we bought it from a family and it had been a family business. And a part of the conditions to buying the business was that we had to we had to